Let's have some fun and get started. Take your spray bottle, spray your pans of paint, put some water in your palette, Let's start with our round with pointy tip brush. Now, let's start with painting the pumpkin by using cadmium red. And put it in the center of the page here. If it's too dark, just add a little water to your brush. A nice round plump pumpkin here. Go around. Fill in that shape. And what I like about watercolor is you can add layers later to it. And that's what we will do. And I like using my bigger brush for the bigger areas. So fill in the pumpkin shape. There's the start of a pumpkin. Pumpkin. Now let's switch brushes here and use our liner brush. Now, now this pumpkin is going to have leaves around it with a branch. So what I like to do when I'm doing this is to start by doing the branches first. So for that, we'll be using both our browns. Burnt sienna and a touch of burnt umber. I don't want too much of the burnt umber because I want it to be more on the lighter side. And then let's start putting some branches that are coming off to the side by the pumpkin. Some over here. And if some of it runs with the in the into the pumpkin, that's okay. We'll give it a little character. And some more off to the side here. Just kind of randomly here and there, however your branches are growing. Remember, this is your creation and yours is going to look similar, but not exactly like mine. That's a good start. Now, when I think about the leaves, there's just so many shapes and colors of leaves. And I happen to have this one that my husband brought me from our backyard and I just think it's really beautiful. So this is kind of the shape that I'm going to use and I really like it that it has a point here and then the jagged little edges. And you can see on it there's yellows and there's a touch of green and some reds. So you can have fun and play with that. So when doing this, I like to start with the lightest color and then work to dark. So let's start with some leaves that are have mostly yellow. So let's use our cadmium yellow and put a touch of orange in it. I already have some orange on my palette here and I'm just going to let them kind of mix together a little bit. And then start some of the leaves, put one here. And I like to start at the bottom of the leaf and just kind of make some jagged lines and then to a point and then come around to the other side, jagged, and then point out and back down and then fill it in. So there's one of my leaves and I think it needs another one over here. And need to load your brush, load your brushes needed. 
and come around here and I didn't really add some branches here. I'm going to go back and add some branches. You can always change your mind and come back to it like that. Now let's change this color up a little bit and add a touch of crimson. Now I have some of the orange and the yellow on my palette and I'm just dipping my brush in into the crimson and loading it with that and going to mix that in with that. And that's going to give it a different little bit of a color. And let's put one here so it has a more red tinge to it. Like that. It's a little too pointy. There, that's better. Come over here. Add one here. Like that. Add one over here. Like that. Need to loan my brush. Running out of some paint there, so I'm going to load some more paint, which was the yellow, some of the cadmium red, and a touch of crimson. Put a leaf up here. It's a little bit dark. I'm going to water that down a little bit. Have fun with your leaves. These are happy changing colorful wonderful autumn leaves put one there one over here that's looking pretty good and just pause for a moment to see if it looks balanced if there's a space that looks empty maybe you need to add a leaf there now there's some green on their leaves so i like adding some leaves that haven't started to change. They're late bloomers. So with just doing the green, I'm going to use my sap green here. Just straight sap green and put some green leaves that haven't started to change yet. They're not ready, but they will. Sooner or later they change. Load your brushes needed. Let's put some over here by the pumpkin. Another one over here. Like that. That's looking pretty good. And maybe one right here. Right here in front of the pumpkin. Like that. That's looking pretty good. And then I, I like to add some leaves that are a little darker. So let's take our sap green, put some on your palette, and take a touch of burnt umber. And that's going to make it a, a darker green and put some leaves on there that are darker. Let's put one over there, maybe another one over here. One about right here. Okay, let's stop and give it a good dry. Now our pumpkin looks pretty flat, one dimensional. Now we want to change that. And to do that, we're going to add some more layers. So when you look at a pumpkin, the, there's lines that go down this way. So let's take some of our yellow. And I have some of the cadmium randomine palette. I'm going to add a little more yellow to that mixture there and put some lines down like this. 
start on one side and then keep working and going across the pumpkin. All the way to the other side. Like that. So now we need to add some darker areas. So let's use our cadmium red here. Put some on your palette. And we want to make that darker. And to make that darker, let's add some burnt sienna. That's going to make it more like a rust color, a shade darker than what this orange is. And if you want, you can always test your color on your paper towel there. That looks about right. And let's add some of that darker. Because now we can see that there's three sh shades, one light, a little darker, and the darkest. And when I look at a pumpkin, I see that it seems like some of the dark color is on top. So I'm starting at the top of the pumpkin and then working down. And it's always good if it's too dark, like this isn't very blended. You can just add some water to soften it. And then if that doesn't work, just take your paper towel and dab it. like that. And that can also create a little texture in your painting. Continue across all the way to the other side of the pumpkin. There's a little more here. Some up here. About like that. That's looking pretty good. I'll put a little more here on this side. Play with it a little bit. Have fun with it. Okay. I see that I need to have a little more leaves on this side where this leaf is. This leaf is lonely. It needs a friend. It needs a pal. So let's add, I have some of this orange color. So go ahead and add one of those. But it's it's missing its green buddy. It needs the green buddy. So take your sap, load your brush with sap, and you want a little bit watery. More a little bit water than paint. Just we want to make some faint green leaves coming out there. Just like that. Now it kind of looks like the branch isn't attached. We're going to go back in there and add some darker branches to highlight them. But we want this area to dry a little bit. So let's give it a dry and we'll work on the stem of the pumpkin. So taking our liner brush, now the stem is a brown color. So let's start with adding a really light, light color. Now this isn't the brown, but the, we're going to build up to that. So let's start with yellow ochre. So when I look at a pumpkin, the stem, I see that it usually has a curve. So I'm putting a curve on my on my pumpkin. I want to water that down a little bit. Have it come down here like that. 
And now I'm going, going to actually stop and dry that because if I add paint to it, the color will run. And sometimes I want that, but in this instance, I don't. Okay, so now let's add, we have the yellow ochre here, and let's add a touch of the burnt sienna. So that will make it another dimension, another shade that will highlight the stem. And when I look at the stem, there's textures. Sometimes there's kind of a stripe, a swirl. So I'm adding a little swirl like that. Okay, now we need to darken that and add an area so there's depth there. So let's take our liner brush and add some burnt umber to our mixture here on our palette. Now this is running a little bit, but not enough. If it's, you know, super spreading and the paint just goes way out, then that's when you might need to take the time and stop and dry it. But it's not too bad, so I'm going to leave it. I kind of like how it's spreading. It's a happy accident accident we call that i didn't plan it but i like it and then sometimes when i look at the stem there's kind of some specks on it so i'm going to put some little spots some little brown spots like that now this area here i want to make darker so I'm going to load my brush with some of the cadmium orange and the mixture of the brown I have here. So I'm, I'm taking my brush and loading it with cadmium red and mixing it with the browns that I have here. I'm just giving that another layer. Like there's even a shadow maybe has cast upon it. Now that doesn't look too blended, but that is a easy fix. Just going to add some water there and you have to play around with it and see how much it just takes a lot of playing around with it. And if you don't like it, go ahead and give it a good dab. And sometimes it takes a little water, a little dabbing, a little this, a little that, and have fun. Sometimes when I paint, I sing, sing a song and it makes the time more enjoyable. But I'm not the greatest singer, so I won't do that. Remember, this is your creation and you have fun with it. I just find painting with watercolor is so relaxing. Now, if you start to feel that you're gripping the brush like this. Take a deep breath and feel free to walk away from your painting and return to it. And that's the beauty of watercolor because you can always go back to it and reactivate your paints and paper with water. Wonderful H2O. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit and dry a little bit. Now we need to add some berries. And I like to add some of those berries that you see that you see and they're kind of a um, cranberry blueberry type of color. So to do that, I'm going to clean a little spot on my palette here. 
I'm taking my crimson and ultramarine blue. I want it to be more of a purple purple, not a red purple, more of a blue purple. That looks looking good. And put some of those berries right here. And I'm going to connect a branch to it, but first I'm just doing the berries. And a few over here. About like that. That's looking pretty good. Maybe a few more on this side. Like that. Okay, now, now when I look at the branches, they seem flat. They don't seem like they pop out. And so to do that, let's add another shade of brown. So before I used both browns. Now to make it darker, you want to use more of the burnt umber and less, less of the burnt sienna. So here's the burnt sienna, and I'm just going to put it on my palette here with the orange. It's not going to hurt anything. And take some of my burnt umber and add more of the burnt umber because I want it darker. I want it more of a chocolate brown. And then let's go ahead and add some highlights on the branches. Just little sporadically. You don't need to do every spot of the branch. You want to leave some of the light and the dark. Light, the light and dark are friends. They're buddies. And then connect some of the berries. Put one here and over here and some here. I think I need to add some more bright red leaves in the mix there. But I'm going to come back to that. And put a red leaf here, but add a branch. Add a branch here. And one over here. Over here. Then always pause and, and look at your painting to see, well, does that look good? Is there any spot I missed? And I think I need one like right over here. And one, and that's good. And since I have brown, I want to add a little spot right here, and then I'm going to stop. So I'm going to add a red leaf here where I put a branch, and one here, and then I'm going to stop. And so to do that, I'm going to use mostly crimson now that has kind of a pinkish hue and i want it more red red and to do that i'm just gonna i have some of the cadmium red here see if that's going to be enough no i need a little more of the cadmium to get it into a red color and that will not be such a pink red it's more of a red red orange red and let's put one right here. See, that kind of makes things pop a little bit. It doesn't look, it was looking empty to me. And it needs one right over here. Autumn has such beautiful colors, just so many, just like that. And then step back. and pause and you know you can make your painting and simple and not complicated i look at that and to me it looks balanced it's easy to want to add more but you know if you're unsure stop and you know put your painting away and come back the next day and you might think oh i like how this looks now to me it looks complete I really hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I did. Hope to see you next time.